Before the movie begins, this story was an anime that people actually liked. But also, a narrative informs us that four powerful nations have ruled the planet for ages. They are fire, air, water, and earth. But a century back, the Fire Nation deemed itself superior and declared a war against the other three nations. It now wants to conquer the world alone. The opening scene features a boy named Soka and his younger sister, Katara, who live in the Southern Water Tribe. The place is completely covered in snow and is encircled by icy waters. Currently, the siblings are trying to hunt some animals for food. After walking a fair distance, they stumble upon an unusual iceberg. When they break into the iceberg, it releases a radiant beam of light and reveals a 12-year-old boy named Aang. He has a distinctive head tattoo and a colossal flying companion, Appa, realizing that the boy is exhausted, the siblings bring him back to their village. On the other hand, the beam of light catches the attention of the disgraced Prince of the Fire Nation, Zuko. He has apparently been banished from the kingdom for being too weak. Because of this, he is on a mission to find the Avatar, the only person who is capable of bending all four elemental powers, air, water, earth, and fire. It is the only way Zuko can prove himself and restore his honor, allowing him to return back to his family. Either that, or he could buy a really loud, really big truck and drive it around. In the next scene, Zuko, along with his men, follow the beam of light and arrive at the Southern Water Tribe to demand for the Avatar. This leaves the villagers, who are mostly elderly, in a precarious position. Katara, despite being young, tries to use her waterbending skill to resist the Fire Nation, but her brother stops her. Faced with the threat of harm to the villagers, Aang willingly surrenders himself to safeguard the village. He is then taken away in their ship, where he meets Zuko's uncle, Iroh. The latter serves as a counterbalance to Zuko's sharp tongue and impulsive anger. Iroh wants to check if Aang is the person they are looking for, so he decides to conduct a test. At first, he places a candle before Aang, and this causes the flame to ascend. Following this, he pours some water, and this surprisingly takes a circular shape of its own. Lastly, when a stone is presented to Aang, Iroh develops a strange bulge in his trousers. But also, the stone balances vertically due to his innate power. These trials confirm that the boy is indeed an avatar. Meanwhile, back in the Water Tribe, Katara confides in her brother, emphasizing their responsibility to protect Aang. They also talk to their grandmother, who identifies the boy's tattoo as an avatar's, and urges them to rescue him from the clutches of the Fire Nation. With this information in hand, Sokka and Katara board Appa and embark on their daring mission to rescue Aang. On the ship, Zuko and Iroh decide to present Aang to their kingdom as a means to redeem Zuko's lost honor. Hearing this, an enraged Aang uses his airbending abilities and incapacitates all the guards in his path. The siblings also arrive there, riding the flying beast and rescue him. Following this, the trio travels to Aang's homeland at the Southern Air Temple. Upon arriving, Aang learns that he's been in the iceberg for a century, during which the Fire Nation eradicated all other air nomads, including his guardian, Monk Jayatso. Overwhelmed by despair, Aang enters the Avatar state and traverses to to the spirit world, where he encounters a dragon spirit. However, before he can take any wrong steps, Katara's pleas snap the boy out of it. After this, the group heads towards an Earth Kingdom village to check on the rest of the villagers. Upon their arrival, they discover that the village is under complete control of the Fire Nation. Before long, some soldiers spot them and imprison them with the rest of the Earthbenders. Witnessing the villagers subjected to enslavement, Aang delivers an inspiring speech, encouraging them to have faith in their own abilities and utilize them to fight for their freedom. Eventually, the three young heroes manage to spark a rebellion, rallying the villagers to join forces against the Fire Nation soldiers. Through their collective efforts, they ultimately emerge victorious, liberating the village from oppression. In the aftermath, Aang tells Katara and Sokka that he has only mastered airbending and remains untrained in the other three elemental disciplines. He reveals that he fled the monastery without training because he wanted to live a normal life. According to Aang, he was told that being the Avatar requires immense sacrifice, including separation from family and all other things that normal people have. But now that he recognizes his responsibilities towards the nations, he wants to master the remaining three elemental powers. With this unwavering determination, the trio sets off for the Northern Water Tribe, where Aang can learn from the water-bending masters. On their way, they make a brief stop by a lake to spend the night. Shortly after, Aang decides to visit a nearby Northern Air Temple, assuring the siblings that he will 
return within a day. Once there, Aang meets with a peasant whom he initially perceives as an ally. However, the peasant's true allegiance is soon revealed. He is a member of the Fire Nation. Aang is swiftly captured by soldiers and presented to Zhao, a ruthless Fire Nation commander. Not long after, a mysterious man with a blue demon mask infiltrates the temple and fights the guards to release Aang. This masked marauder calls himself the Blue Spirit. After learning about the intruder, Commander Zhao dispatches his troops to stop them, but the Blue Spirit and Aang join forces to fend off the soldiers. When Commander Zhao declares an order to not harm the Avatar, the Blue Spirit immediately holds Aang at knife point to secure their escape. Soon after, Zhao realizes that the Blue Spirit is none other than Zuko. In response, he has his crossbowmen incapacitate Zuko with a well-aimed bolt. But before the soldiers can apprehend them, Aang uses his abilities to escape with the unconscious Zuko. Aang watches over him until the morning and then departs to reunite with the siblings. Shortly after, Zuko regains consciousness and makes his way back to his uncle. Iroh. On the other hand, Commander Zhao conveys the news of Zuko's intervention to the king. He explains that he had the Avatar captured, but Zuko came in the way and spoiled his plans. Surprisingly, the king doesn't get angry and instructs the commander to leave his son alone. He believes that Zuko is still naive, so he doesn't deserve punishment. Regardless, Zhao, who is unable to tolerate Zuko on his way, attempts to kill him by blowing up the entire ship. Fortunately, Zuko somehow manages to survive. Meanwhile, Aang, Sokka, and Katara reach the Northern Water Tribe, where they receive a warm welcome from the inhabitants. They present themselves before the royal court, where Aang proves himself to be the last airbender, earning him permission to undergo training with the master. Aang is then introduced to a waterbending master named Paku, who starts teaching both Aang and Katara in the advanced techniques of waterbending, including the magic beer bong technique. In the midst of their training, Sokka and Princess Yu of the Northern Water Tribe find find themselves drawn to each other, seemingly experiencing love at first sight. Apart from all this, the kingdom seems to be aware of the impending war, so they begin the preparations for it. A few days later, their assumption comes true as the Fire Nation, led by Commander Zhao, arrives at the Northern Water Tribe and prepares for their attack. While Zhao focuses on attacking the tribe, Zuko makes his way inside the Northern Water Kingdom and continues his search for the Avatar. In the meantime, Princess Yu leads Aang to a serene location where he can meditate. Once there, Aang re-enters the Avatar state and begins looking for the Dragon Spirit so that he can get help to defeat the Fire Nation. Princess Yu and Sokka depart to check the situation outside, while Katara opts to remain with Aang to ensure his safety. A short while later, Zuko locates the meditation spot where he engages in a one-on-one -on -one confrontation with Katara. Although she manages to neutralize several of his fire attacks, Katara ultimately gets defeated by Zuko, who then captures Aang. In the spirit world, Aang manages to find the dragon spirit, who advises him to use the ocean and show the Fire Nation the power of water. Armed with this guidance, as if he didn't already know that fire is weak to water, Aang returns to his physical body, only to find Zuko standing before him. They immediately engage in a fierce battle, with Aang using his airbending power, while the prince uses his firebending power. The battle rages on until Katara intervenes, freezing Zuko into a solid block of ice. Following this, they make their way to join the ongoing conflict. Outside, Commander Zhao's troops launch their assaults, creating chaos among the Northern Tribe. The waterbenders are trying their best to stop the Fire Nation soldiers, but it is not that easy because of their overwhelming number. Amidst this commotion, Commander Zhao and Iroh make their way into a sacred cave. There, the commander captures the Moon Spirit, which is the Water Kingdom's sacred entity. Without it, the people have no powers whatsoever. Sensing his sinister intention, Iroh attempts to dissuade him, urging him not to tamper with nature. However, Commander Zhao disregards his advice and kills the Moon Spirit, which causes all the waterbenders to lose their abilities. Now, the commander believes that it will become much easier for them to take over the northern and southern water tribe. Enraged by Zhao's sacrilegious act, Iroh reveals his mastery of firebending. This scares the commander and his followers, prompting them to run from the sacred cave. Following this, Iroh emphasizes 
emphasizes the importance of maintaining the balance of nature and suggests that there may be a way to restore the ecosystem. Hearing this, Princess Yu decides to sacrifice herself to revive the moon spirit. Soka tries to stop her from doing so, but the princess has made up her mind. She gives him a first and final kiss before sacrificing herself for the sake of her people. Moments later, the waterbenders regain their abilities and continue their defense against the Fire Nation. Afterwards, Commander Zhao and Zuko finally come face to face. The two prepare for a final showdown, but just then, Iroh intervenes. Still enraged by what happened, he asks his nephew to step aside. Following this, the waterbenders, who are fueled by anger over the death of their princess and the desecration of the moon's spirit, exact their vengeance, drowning Zhao to his death. Despite this, the war isn't over yet, as the Fire Nation soldiers continue their advance toward the Northern Water Tribe on their ships. Aang takes a moment to reflect on his past life before being trapped in the iceberg. Thinking about his upbringing among the Air Nomads, he then taps into the Avatar State one last time and uses his immense power to raise the ocean into an enormous barrier, forcing the remaining Fire Nation soldiers to move back. This prompts the Fire Nation to retreat, temporarily bringing an end to the war. In the aftermath of this event, Aang is presented before the gathered crowd, who pay their respects by bowing to him. Can't believe you ended the war with a single cheap special effect, sir. In the final scene, we see Zuko's father, Fire Lord Ozai, who assigns his daughter, Princess Azula, the task of preventing the Avatar from mastering Earth and fire. Will there be a sequel? No. 